sure that you have your important documents secure and in a safe place, preferably in a waterproof bag or container, such as birth certificates, social security cards, insurance policies, and etc. So we want you to make your preparations and stay informed, and GOSEP will continue to provide updates as we monitor the storm's progress. Again, if you can go to your app store, if you have not yet, and download the, um, the getagameplan.org app, uh, we encourage you to do so as well. At this time, I'd like to bring up our GOSEP director, Jacques Thibodeau. Uh, good morning, everyone. Okay, uh, real quick for everyone, the time to evacuate has now passed. It is the time to go to ground and hunker down. We are now no longer in the prepare for a hurricane. We are now in the respond for a hurricane or to a hurricane. So what I'd like to do is to take a quick moment and highlight the fact that we've, we've been uh, – uh, working in a partnership with FEMA for the past three days. We have our Region 6 Director, Tony Robinson, is here, uh, and he's going to say a few words, and then we're going to turn it over to Jay Grimes to give you a quick weather update, and we're going to talk about how you respond to the initial effects of a storm. So, Tony? Thank you, Jacques. Thank you, Governor. Uh, as Jacques said, we've been working very closely with GOSA. For the last several days, we've got teams on site. We've got commodities here like water Meals ready to eat, generators that are ready to deploy out, uh, working with GOSUP. We'd really like you to do what the governor said, uh, take this storm seriously. It is a serious storm. Your final action should be complete, and now is the time to hunker down and ride the storm out. Follow the instructions of your local officials. The president did declare an emergency yesterday based on the governor's request. That provides the assistance that the locals and states may need for commodities, resources, and some reimbursement. So we just want everybody to know that really is for the governments right now to be able to help them make sure that we're taking life-sustaining, life-supporting actions. We'll continue to work closely with the state and GOSIP on being prepared for the storm, whatever resources are needed post-storm, and do some assessments to be able to determine what other federal assistance may be needed. Thank you. Jay, quick, quick update. So we know that the landfall will be later this afternoon into the evening hours, but I want to remind everybody that the first uh, wave of tropical storm force winds aren't that far away. They'll probably begin to move in on the coastline soon after midday. And behind that, by just a couple of hours, that first line of hurricane force winds. So even though landfall is later today, as uh, gentlemen have already said, it's time to go ahead and sit down and take uh, your place and ride out this storm. The little bit of good news here is is that the storm should move through relatively quickly. Most of the impacts should be out of the state by or soon after midnight. And we're also looking at a little bit of a reduction in the rainfall totals with the storm system as well. All that said, this is still going to be a serious weather event between now and midnight tonight. So go ahead, take your precautions, finish up the last of your preparations, and ride it out today. Okay, State Fire Marshal, sir. Good morning. Thank you, Jock. Governor, we're going to talk about generator safety today. And, you know, we always talk about this issue because it is an issue. Make sure that when you use a portable generator, you keep it away from the windows and away from the exterior of the house and the openings of the house. Be sure that you always keep it 20 to 15 to 20 feet away from those windows and those doors. Before fueling it, make sure you turn it off and let it cool for 15 to 20 minutes. Never use it during the storm. Use it after the storm. Make sure you have a fire extinguisher close by, and make sure that you have your carbon monoxide detector working and in order. This is very important. We lose people every hurricane because of this issue. Please adhere to those restrictions and warnings. Thank you. Sir, could you please say your name? Brian Adams. Okay. Louisiana National Guard, Wildlife and Fisheries on our search and rescue program. Yep. Hey, good morning. Uh, since Monday, the Louisiana National Guard has been mobilizing and deploying uh, across the coastal parishes of Louisiana to re respond to the hurricane. And based on the track of the storm moving east, as of yesterday evening, we started repositioning our forces to the southeast and south-central Louisiana. We currently have uh, over 2,300 guardsmen on mission, and we'll continue to mobilize forces to reach approximately 2,500 total strength uh, before the storm uh, strikes. The Louisiana National Guard is supporting civil authorities and other agencies, and will continue these efforts uh, with a focus on search and rescue. To assist with that potential search and rescue mission, operationally right now we have 58 boats and 101 high-water vehicles 
uh, in the uh, area of operations. We also have now 61 aircraft in the Aviation Task Force. Our air coordination cell here at GOSEP is working with other federal and state partners, such as the U.S. Coast Guard and the Louisiana State Police, to synchronize air search and rescue assets and operations. Uh, we also have other assets that are in reserve to include uh, 29 additional boats and over 270 additional high water vehicles. Uh, we've pre-staged 14 route clearance teams across seven parishes to assist with debris removal and clearing roads for our first responders can respond to the storm. Additionally, the Louisiana National Guard has liaison officer teams supporting numerous parishes across the state. Overall, our mission is to support the state, parish, and local partners is to save lives, mitigate suffering, protect property, and assist in rapid transition to normal operations. We are working in coordination with our neighboring states, the National Guard Bureau, U.S. NORTHCOM, for contingency planning of additional forces as we continue to assess the storm. The Louisiana National Guard is prepared and equipped to respond to the hurricane. Our training prepares us for this mission, and we are ready. Thank you. Good afternoon. The Department of Wildlife and Fisheries has a long history of working with both the Louisiana National Guard and Louisiana State Police in events like this. We currently have 150 agents fully prepared with both rescue trucks and rescue vessels to go into any needed areas, as well as our MSRT teams ready to do mission-ready recon missions when they need to go into the areas post-storm. Thank you. Okay, we're going we're gonna to have Joe Donahue from DOTD and Colonel Hodges from State Police to talk about the situation of the roads as well as the public safety aspect. Uh, thank you. Good morning. Uh, Joe Donahue from DOTD. Uh, we are monitoring the current situations. There are currently four roads in the state that are closed due to either rising water or closing floodgates, closed floodgates. Uh, and I just also want to remind everyone that after the storm passes, that does not mean the danger is over. We will be sending crews out to clear roadways from debris and to monitor for, for flooding. Um, but uh, do not drive through standing or running water. Keep an eye out for downed power lines and always keep safety first. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. LSP has over 400 troopers active across the state with the additional personnel, personnel available and on standby, ready to respond to storm-related issues. Troops in affected areas are operating on double shifts to increase uniform patrol presence throughout the state. As road and travel conditions are affected, all updates will be available through the 511 Travel Information System at 511-1A.org. Dial 511 from your mobile phone or telephone or through the Louisiana 511 mobile app. To report stalled vehicles on the interstate or roadways, star 577 or star LSP from your cell phone, it'll track you to your nearest troop location so that way we can respond accordingly. We urge residents in southeast Louisiana specifically to comply with your local evacuation orders and take all precautions to keep you and your family safe. Motorists should avoid all unnecessary travel and be mindful of curfew restrictions in their local communities. As the governor said and the other state officials, please follow the rules and regulations that your parish and local leaders have put in place and remain inside. This is a time right now when no one should be out on the roadways. Additionally, our troopers are ready and fully prepared to respond, but need everyone's help to ensure the safety of our communities. Please check on your loved ones, check on those who are most in need by telephone to make sure that they have everything they need so when the storm does uh, pass and we move into the next phase of our operation, that you know where they are and that they were safe prior to the, it hitting the coast this afternoon. Thank you. Governor. Yeah, again, a couple of things. Uh, again, want to thank uh, Tony uh, and FEMA, uh, the FEMA Administrator, uh, Cresswell, uh, and the White House for responding to Louisiana's needs and giving us that pre-landfall uh, declaration. Uh, we look forward to working with them uh, as we move into the post-storm recovery uh, on tomorrow. I, um, again, um, we're going to be putting out also for the press, we're going to be putting out some information uh, because I know that you have had some questions on shelters. I would remind you all 
that initial sheltering is always a local uh, responsibility and that they put it out. Uh, if statewide shelters are going to be um, uh, operational, we will get you all that information as well. Uh, again, I would urge residents to take the necessary steps of preparing for the storm to come. It is on our doorstep as we speak. Remember, after the storm is over, please remain in place. As you heard from all of these agencies, it, it, we are going to have a lot of people on the roadway that is necessary to put the vital infrastructure back in place so that you can go about your daily lives. We have checked with our utility uh, partners. Uh, we feel like they preposition the assets necessary uh, to help them. Uh, Jay is going to give us some great information, hopefully tomorrow, that the winds will die down real, real fast so that the utility crews can get up and on those lines, because remember, they have a wind restriction as to, as you know, if the wind exceeds 30 miles an hour, they can't repair the line. So we're hoping that this storm passes fast enough through the state and we can get every, all those utility trucks and DOTD and our first responders on the roadway. But again, we urge our citizens to stay off the roadway if you are not inside of that critical needs, vital labor force. Um, and with that, we'll take any questions that you may have. This one is for DOTD. You guys mentioned four roadways that are closed. Are, are any of those in our direct area? So, so if you're referring to the capital region, the answer is no. Um, there's St. Mary Parish uh, and more of the coastal parishes, Cameron and Vermilion. Yeah, thank you. Could you be a little bit more specific about which road closures there are? I certainly can. Let me bring my notes up here. Uh, so we've got, uh, I know it's 317 in um, St. Mary Parish, which was requested by the locals. Uh, we also have uh, LA 45, a portion of it in Jefferson Parish, LA 3147 in Vermilion, and then LA 27 in Cameron. And I'd also remind you, I think on DOTD's um, app and website, um, 511, 511, which was mentioned. This That's correct. These road closures actually posted there as well. So I would, I would, you know, encourage the press to monitor DOTD's app. They do a great job of, of, of updating those road closures and any issues that we have with the infrastructure in almost real time. Yes, Julie. Um, are you all coordinating at all with the Cajun Navy? What role do you expect, if any, do you expect them to play? And um, I, I wonder, Governor, if you've talked to the president. Oh, I have, I have not spoken directly to the president, but I have spoken uh, to the FEMA administrator. I've spoken to Major General Peoples uh, with the Corps of Engineers. Um, we are, 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 have been working with our congressional delegation, um, you know, the entire delegation. In fact, we had we we actually invited the congressional delegation staff into the UCG meeting, um, so that they could participate as well. And uh, I am fully confident that our federal partners are are working very well with the state agencies, and our local partners are being are, are doing a great job as well. Okay, as far as the Cajun Navy, all of the volunteer organizations active during a disaster, it's called VOAD, is the acronym for it, uh, are all a major element of GOSEP. We meet with them quarterly to include uh, the elements of the Cajun Navy as well as ground force, which is another element. So they are, we do talk to them throughout the year, every quarter, and they're always involved and integral in our process. It's just one more tool in our toolbox that we always use in every disaster. All right, any more questions? Uh, regarding sheltering, have, uh, has the state mega shelter had any requests from the locals to take in any of that overflow yet? We have not. Have yep, not we have not. not. Why do you know of any? I'm asking you, Governor. Well, no, I, didn't, I know you asked me like you might have known. I, we don't. We, we have no information today um, that there's any requests. No, Doc and mm -hmm. I both have not received any requests from a parish. And yesterday you told us that there were just a handful of people relocated from nursing homes. Have there been any more evacuations from nursing homes? Yesterday we mentioned Vermilion had moved eight. The only update, Luline has moved two to Metairie. Other than that, everything's uh, going well. All right, any more questions? Yep. yep. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, Jay, is... is does it look like the storm in the eye is headed more toward the east now, jogging more toward New Orleans? 
the shift that we saw in the uh, storm track yesterday came to an end during the afternoon and evening. And since yesterday afternoon, yesterday evening, there's been no appreciable shift to the east. So even if we see a minor jog between now and landfall, it's not likely to be sufficient enough to greatly endanger New Orleans beyond the state that they're currently in. Okay, last, any, any last questions? Yeah, we had the Red, the Red Cross was in our UCG. I, I, I don't see any deviation from what we've done in the past. We certainly want to add our faith-based organizations um, that have been interwoven into GOSEP as well. Um, and, and so, lastly, look, I want to thank the citizens of the state. I think that all of y'all, uh, everyone out there has been great in, as we prepare for this particular storm. Again, I would caution our citizens that just because it is a Category 1 or possibly a Category 2 doesn't mean it's just going to be a thunder bumper, right? I know that we have been through a lot here in Louisiana. Uh, again, I urge everyone to take the necessary preparations if you're in the storm's pathway to un understand that you may be without utilities for some time. Uh, and so to go ahead and make those necessary arrangements, uh, we look forward to ke keeping information available through our GetAGamePlan.org app and also through our different various agencies and through GOSEP. Jacques, anything? No. Okay. Thank you. Governor Jeff Landry and other emergency management officials mm -hmm. giving us an update on where things stand from the state level. Bottom line, the headline, and this is a direct quote, the time to prepare has passed. Officials saying if by now you have not made the decision to leave and you are in an area that's low lying with the conditions deteriorating, they do not want you on area roadways now. So they're asking mm -hmm. you to stay put where you are. Now, as far as that is concerned, emergency management uh, operators, first responders will not get to you if there is an emergency until conditions are clear enough for mm -hmm. them to do so. But again, the headline from state officials right now, Governor Jeff Landry and other emergency management uh, personnel, the time to prepare has passed.